Town Council meeting, February 13th, 2017. As always, we start with the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item two on tonight's agenda is a proclamation for Operation Wear Red, and I see a number of red shirts here tonight. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. Uh, for Julia's, Julia's Wings Foundation and Aplastic Anemia Awareness Week. The Julia Wings Foundation. Whereas aplastic anemia, anemia is a rare and serious disease where a person's bone marrow fails to make enough blood cells. And whereas aplastic anemia can appear at any age, in any race or gender, with between 600 and 900 people in the United States being diagnosed each year. And whereas many people who have aplastic anemia can be successfully treated with prompt care with blood and marrow stem cell transplants, offering a cure for some people with the disease. And whereas individuals with aplastic anemia often require a specialized medical and support services to ensure their health and safety and to support families' resilience as they manage the financial burdens that aplastic anemia can present. And whereas the Julia's Wings Foundation, formed in honor of local resident Julia Malson, is now celebrating four years of service to families affected by aplastic anemia and dedicated to providing funding for research, is spearheading an awareness effort called Operation Wear Red in order to educate parents, families, professionals, and the general public about aplastic anemia and its effects. Now, therefore, I, David R. Grunbach, Mayor of New Milford, Connecticut, do hereby proclaim February 27th through March 5th, 2017, as Aplastic Anemia Awareness Week. In New Milford, Connecticut, encourage all employees and residents to participate, to participate in aplastic anemia awareness activities as they see fit. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say I don't have any random shirts. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll make sure we wear them tomorrow. That was kind of magical because I said, where's my room? Where's my, Where's my million dollars, Walt? There's, there's <laughs> there you go. Mayor, we hate to be yes. people, but is there any way we can get a picture? Of course, yes, please. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm sorry. It's all about America. I always forget about the picture. Yeah, Absolutely. Would somebody like to take a picture of Walt? Or um, Frank, you want to take a picture? Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Now, let us know anything else we can do. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's always a good thing. Uh, thank you. Item three, public comments. Once again, I will be the executioner, please. Five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, Lisa Ostro. Hi. Did you start? You're going to be <laughs> <laughs> Go, Lisa! Dear town council members and to all those this may concern, and this is a, a letter written by my husband who couldn't be here tonight. We are proud owners of 175 Cannelwood Mountain Road, a home built in 1825, along with a farm, a barn, woodlands, and a pond. 
Our property consists of 11 acres, 6.9 purchased in 02, and then 4.1 purchased in 04. It is with profound dismay that we find ourselves in this situation, a position we have actively fought against for years, attempting to protect the natural setting of this beautiful piece of land we call home. Not only do we think the stretch of Candlewood Mountain Road we live on is the prettiest road in New Milford, it might possibly be one of the nicest country roads in all of Connecticut. This project directly threatens the aesthetic value of our neighborhood, not to mention the potential damage and danger that clear cutting this forest could bring. It is difficult to understand why, with all the less pristine development options available in town, one would consider taking apart this special place. If it is simply about the money, the least expensive option versus destroying the integrity and character of this incredible area, how does one equate that which is worth preserving with the temporary measure that will mar the land and is completely executable elsewhere? Possibly in nearby potential sites that are already options encumbering disturbed land sites in town, and all without producing anguish from those who live around it. The landowners around the proposed site should have the right to meticulously study and question results from tests of the area. I'm not aware of the status of any tests or studies done yet, but they certainly should include project view shed visibility, especially from Candlewood Mountain Road, an engineered site plan, an erosion control plan, a stormwater management plan, traffic plan, construction sequence plan, potential impact to candlelight airport plan, and a decommissioning plan. With regard to wetlands and steep slope ramifications, these should be considered and studied, especially in light of unpredictable weather patterns becoming much more common and disruptive. Also a plan for evergreen screens and a transformer study. Indeed, if things go terribly wrong, who's going to be responsible? Will there be a bond to protect homeowners in the area from adverse visual impacts of this project? Erosion control bonds, road bonds, landscaping bonds. In conclusion, it is illogical to clear-cut a forest taking working farmland out of production for this proposed project. It is illogical to put a potentially worthy project like this in a special environmental setting or area known for its beauty and wildlife when less desirable options are certainly available. There are absolutely more suitable site choices for this project. Thank you for your attention and kind consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy? Hi, Nancy Sabuse, 195 Candlewood Mountain Road. Just have, I, I was fortunate enough to get one of the agreements in my hands, and I didn't have a whole lot of time to go through it, but there were just a couple of things that stuck out, two things actually. And, and I know you'll probably see them, but um, I see safeguards for the town, but I don't see any safeguards for the property owners. So if something does go wrong, if something happens to go wrong, what are our safeguards? Um, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to address this, but I didn't see it in here. Maybe it is, but I, I, I didn't see it as I went through it. Um, and that was uh, Schedule B number one. Schedule B number eight, um, the stormwater management plan, and it says that um, it, it was going to be approved. It should be approved by the Inland Wetlands Commission, I think, and not the mayor and someone from wetlands. I think it should be the whole entire commission. Maybe not, but something for you guys to consider. Um, I did ask for a rendering months and months ago. Um, one was not done. I haven't seen one yet. I know it'll be much nicer when the leaves come out in the spring, but we do have winters here, and um, I think it would be nice to have one for the people of Candlewood Mountain Road. And I think it, I, I'm not getting it. So, um, however, you can encourage that. Maybe, maybe we can get something, and not just a little space that you look up and you see trees and maybe something, but all along Candlewood Mountain Road because this is a big project. It's not just on one little section. And the last thing I want to say is, um, and it's hearsay, um, that I've heard that solar panels are being traded, maybe for some, for some um, acceptance of this program, some land and maybe some solar panels. Now, this is all hearsay. I don't know if it's correct. It's just stuff that's out there. But if there is any truth to this, um, it doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right that um, we can trade something for um, cutting down trees and, and ruining land. And um, 
So anyway, that's all I have to say. I'll keep it short. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Appreciate that. Gregorio. Thank you, Walter. Well, thank you, Walter. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. How's everyone doing tonight? Good? Um, thank you for the budget proposal. That was, oh, Joseph DiGregorio, 18 Cobbler Lane. Um, so I'm here um, actually to, to comment on the email that I had sent you all last Friday, I guess afternoon, um, with a request for a proposed maybe a amendment to the charter or maybe an ordinance uh, for the town regarding um, the relationship between um, the mayor and the town's attorney. Um, under section 1102, uh, the town's attorney uh, is cited to be the legal advisor of town council, mayor, all town officers, boards, commissions, and all matters affecting the town. And upon written request, submitted through the office of the mayor uh, to furnish a written opinion with a reasonable period of time after the receipt of such request on any question of law involving their respective powers and duties. And because the board of finance um, was at odds with the mayor, and the director of finance, um, which I actually in the email called the purchasing authority. I don't know if that's technically what it is, but being that they're the majority members of the purchasing authority, I figured it was appropriate. Um, I kind of feel that asking for a legal opinion when you're at odds with someone and they have the authority to control whether or not that illegal, legal opinion gets written, and they also appoint the person that that legal opinion uh, comes from and have the ability to fire that person, I kind of find that that might color the legal opinion itself. So. Um, what I have proposed here, and I'll submit it to you, um, is changing section 1102 to say upon written request, either submitted through the office of the mayor or by resolution of the majority of an elected town board or commission. And what that would do is allow the town boards and commissions to request that legal opinion with some level of autonomy um, so that there wouldn't be any color. So if, if at some point, maybe zoning or some other elected board or commission um, is at odds with the mayor regarding a decision, they don't have to go through the mayor's office in order to request a legal opinion on that issue. And here, I'll give this to you for that. Um, and just something for you to consider. I also put in there, would you mind passing that, that down for me? Um, and also maybe consider having a budget individually for each department for those legal opinions. Um, I just think it might make, a, uh, make the, the process of governance go a little bit more smoothly um, and with less confusion, you know? Um, and that's it. I, uh, I appreciate it, and thank you guys for everything that you do. I'll see you Wednesday. Carl Dunn. Uh, good evening, everybody. And I'm hearing, obviously, you're going and partying on your budget uh, deliberations, and I know that's a problem. Uh, I think it's something that uh, uh, basically has to be significantly cut. And by that, I mean in all categories. Uh, I think what's happened is, is we basically just keep spending. And then we chase around to try to get the, the revenue to pay for it. And that comes out of the taxes. So I think that uh, rather than just say, oh, we'll do the same thing, or we'll add this, or we'll do that, I think that needs to be some really hard looks at what is efficient and what really works. So I encourage you to do that. I know it's not very popular because it involves maybe affecting people, but I think we've gotten out of control. And uh, so I encourage you in your deliberations, which are not going to be much fun, uh, to think of that in that regard. Uh, more specifically, I am very upset about what's going on with this solar project, as you know. Uh, since our last meeting, I went to a workshop at the state level, and it was very interesting. I didn't see anybody else here uh, that represents anything, but I think it was very well recognized number of things. One is that the size of these solar projects are way too large. Uh, Massachusetts, for example, who was in a leader uh, on, this, on this area, basically would have RFPs for 10 megawatts. Now their current RFPs are for 4 megawatts. And the reason for that is they are so massive. Uh, now, on the future RFPs that they're going to be doing in Connecticut, they're also looking for smaller projects. I just think that this project is huge, especially when you don't put it in an area where it's more suited. Put it in a residential area is just beyond me. I know you're all striking to get money, but I would point out to you that you'd make more money if you didn't have this agreement. 
All you have to do is figure out how much money you would be making, especially in the beginning. Now, you've been finessed into a place where you've been told that, oh, you can't do this project without it. So two things have happened. One is you've kind of gotten behind the project just in order to get some taxes. But worse than that, you've kind of sold yourself down the river from the standpoint of really getting these taxes if, in fact, you need them. All you have to do is, is look at what it would cost or what the taxes would be for this personal property that would be installed. And uh, I mean, the conversation is this 10 to $20 million. The tax revenue would be a lot bigger if you didn't do this. So I really question why you're pushing this. In addition to that, and I made it real clear. I wrote two letters, one to the mayor and all your town council people, and then I wrote another one yesterday that you're trespassing on a very important issue. And that is, when I brought an action against the town and they denied the site plan uh, for the project that was on there, I made it real clear, and so did, it was so understood that that zoning would not change, especially on the initiation of the town. So now, it just amazes me. You put right in this agreement to encourage that. I mean, that's really flying in my face. Now, as much as I put this all out to everybody, nobody contacts me, I'm gonna tell you something. I don't appreciate it. I don't understand it. I get a, there are conversations put out there like, you know, I never get them. So I don't think it's smart. I don't think it's appropriate. If you look at what the, the principles that are going on by the state with respect to protect, protecting natural resources, protecting farmland, spending money for that. A minute, Carl. Thank you very much. So uh, I encourage you to address that and address it in a very sincere way, because I mean business. I don't understand what's going on. So uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, you all work very hard, and I appreciate it, and uh, I don't envy you in your positions, and I realize that you're all you know, public servants. I just encourage you to really look again at this issue and vote down this pilot project. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Douglas Scully, please. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council members. My name is Douglas Skelly. I live on 4 Birchwood Lane. Um, I had the privilege of sitting on uh, two turf committees. Many of you are familiar with, uh, with me over the last few years. I currently sit on the uh, Park Direct Board. Tonight here I'm requesting, uh, there was a town vote for $4 million back in October uh, 2015, and it was approved by the town voters. And I'm here uh, to ask for the remainder to be put into a, a turf fund so it can be carried over for replacement in the coming years. Um, the total cost was $3.661 million. I confirmed this total with Eric at BSC who oversaw the project. The balance leaves about $338,844. I recently spoke at facilities last week and uh, I plan to speak at the BOE to discuss setting up a turf replacement committee. I feel we need to be proactive to ensure that there's no financial burden in the future to the taxpayer when it comes to replacing the fields in about 10 to 12 years. I feel with the remaining monies that are approved and the future earnings that could be made from the field, such as youth organization fees, hosting championships, doing advertisements, so forth. I also spoke to Alan Hubbard, who uh, was part of Sprint Turf. He, uh, he was the one that installed both fields, uh, the north and the main field, and asked him about cost. Um, the main field is about 100,000 square feet, and the north field is about 83,000 square feet. Uh, the cost to replace that is $4.50 uh, per square foot. So that would leave about $450,000 to replace the main and about three hundred and seventy-three dollars to replace the north. The cost would include the removal and reinstallation. They can repurpose the sand and the crumb rubber can be repurposed, so that's not a cost. If we do this now and it's done right, I believe when it comes time to replace these fields, the monies will be readily available in the next 10 to 12 years when it comes time. Mr. Hubbard had mentioned to me that New Fairfield had done the same thing with setting up a committee, and uh, when they came time to replace them, they actually had a surplus of over $200,000 when it came time to replace them. So I will formally ask the BOE at their next meeting to set up a turf committee replacement, excuse me, replacement committee, and gladly uh, volunteer my services as well. You know, there's a lot of savings. I've done a lot of work on how much 
that they're going to say over the next 10 to 12 years. With the paint alone, it's 600 gallons a year that they won't use. So if you do it by 10 years, that's $6,000. Alone, it'll be $120,000 in 10 years saved alone without paint. Man hours. 500 man hours a year times 10 for mowing, lining, maintenance of those two fields will no longer be needed because obviously they're turf now. That's about $100,000. The new lighting, which is LED, will save about 66% a year for the lighting. I don't have the figures before that, what it costs, but I'm sure it's in the thousands. So we're already helped to a head start of saving probably about 300,000 between main uh, man hours, paint, and so forth. And then if we could have the balance, we could put that into a special fund, and then we could have a committee to make it grow throughout the next 10 years. And this way, when it comes time to replace them, nobody's coming in front and asking for a million dollars, which would probably be around what it's gonna cost. So I thank you for your time. If you have any questions or anything about numbers, you feel free to contact me. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Dr. David Kellogg. Hi, I'm David Kellogg from 7 Lookout Ridge Road in Milford. I was here a few weeks back and spoke uh, as well on the solar project. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk tonight, I just uh, had the opportunity of spending uh, last week in uh, San Diego on business. And uh, because of the snowstorm, I was stuck in the airport uh, sitting next to a guy who was in the solar industry out, in, out west. Um, his whole point, we spoke for a couple hours about this, and his whole point to me was uh, that solar farms, to be uh, efficient, need clear days, uh, real clear days to be efficient. And his whole point to me was that, that most solar farms that we have in the United States are out west. And when you, you look at Las Vegas area, you look at uh, the California desert, you look at the Arizona desert, this sort of thing, where most of the solar farms are. And his point was that uh, uh, average clear days on a yearly basis for these places are anywhere between 200 and 225 days a year, whereas here in Connecticut, it's less than uh, 85 days a year. Uh, my point above that is, his point to me is that why do we all do green energy now? And it's because it's the economic or the uh, environmentally friendly thing to do. It's the thing to do now. Uh, uh, his point to me is that it's got to be environmentally friendly to do it. And what I'm asking to you people is, is it environmentally friendly to clear cut the amount of acreage on far wooded farmland? What are, what are you trading? Are you environmentally cutting all of this stuff? Is it going to be environmentally friendly to cut this area to make a solar farm? Is there a trade-off? Is it in the positive or is it in the negative? And I'm saying to you that I think it's in the negative because it's beautiful farmland that is being attacked across the country right now. That's, that is as, as much as solar power, uh, power and wind power is uh, the environmental uh, topic of the day, what's happening to our farmland across the country is every bit as much as a part of the topic of the day. So this, to me, the good does not outweigh the bad. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Honey. Good evening, Mayor, Town Council members. Um, I would like to speak on a couple of topics. I attended the Board of um, Education Operation and Facility meeting this week, and I was exposed to, let's say, what seemed to me to be some misinformation. There was a gentleman during public comment who was a prominent member of a certain party in town that stated that the East Street building is the only municipal building in town that is not ADA compliant. That's incorrect. As we all know, we can talk about it in multiple directions. The current status of our own police department 
it's non-ADA compliant. The mayor had even mentioned it in one of his presentations to a board that at least the benefit is that at least our police officers are all fit. So I guess it shouldn't be an issue. However, when discussing the slight possibility of somebody who may need to go to the Board of Ed for a meeting at the East Street building, it's a catastrophe for the whole town. Even though currently, East Street has no violations. None. Another building, surprising, that's also non-ADA compliant is JPS School. Yes, JPS school, whether it's JPS school now, and I guess when it goes through its zoning application, will even become more non-ADA compliant with the regulations it will have to meet at that time. So what I would ask is for the town and you guys during the budget process, if we have so many that are concerned about the ADA compliance, why aren't we doing something about it? Why don't we budget in the police department to make it ADA compliant? Why don't we budget in the future JPCC or whatever the terminology is for it to be brought up to current codes? If that's what it needs, then that's what it should have. But to skirt around the issue, to me it's just silly. I mean, we moved voting from JPS to Odd Fellows. Anybody know if Odd Fellows is ADA compliant? We send voters there to vote. Another concern I have is that two weeks ago when I was here, Mr. Zarbo was here before you folks requesting an additional $85,000 for sand and salt. I'll repeat now what I repeat then. I believe Mr. Zarbo and all of his employees do an excellent job taking care of our roads. But I believe that them having to come back to us again tonight for another $75,000, it's poor budgeting. So again, with budget week coming up, I would like for there to be a more proactive budget done. I believe there was also a request last year for a new truck. I saw a Ford F-350 dump truck plowing Pickett District. Is <laughs> that really? the kind of equipment we have because we didn't afford DPW, the proper equipment. You think that type of a truck can actually get down to pavement and clear the snow? One more item I'd like to address is at the, at the operations meeting, there was a statement made about how the money chain works for the 1995 resolution on capital expenditure from the Board of Education. It's clear in our resolution that it goes through the town council and the board of finance. At that meeting, however, the mayor rebuted that and said that he had consulted with council and that that was not the case. I would like to know from this board or from the legal attorneys what the actual situation is. So when people are actually take the time to go to a meeting, that they're not being told mistruths by people who were elected to represent them. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Let's take a look, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So moving on to item three, public comp, oh, excuse me, approval of the private minutes. Show Motion approved. to approve the regular town council meeting minutes of 123-2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Mr. Esposito. I'll abstain. And Mr. Wargo. Thank you. you. Okay. No, you don't have to, according to Robert's mm -hmm. rules. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Item five, mayor's comments. One of the things I'd like to address is the passing of the former first selectman, Lou White, uh, who passed away uh, last week. Uh, Mr. White was a carpenter by trade, which is something that I hold dear to my heart, as both my father and uh, grandfather um, were carpenters and woodworkers. And so I appreciate that he put down his hammer and all uh, to engage in public service. And 
and is to serve six years in office. And looking at some of the projects, I know that what he did was not easy because I'm trying to do some of the same things. He converted undeveloped lands near Young's Field into a rec recreational facility. Um, he was described as being strong-willed, which I can appreciate as being a necessary trait for this job. Um, during this period, he adopted zoning, which to this day I know is, uh, is not an easy undertaking, uh, even to get compliance with. So um, I'm glad that before he passed, we were able to issue a commendation for Mr. White and, um, and hopefully it gave him some comfort in his final days. I know from his family that he was very proud of his service to the community um, and that the recognition made a lot to him. So um, that's all I have to say with regard to that. Wish him and his family all the best. Um, with regard to some of the comments tonight, I do want to address some of the issues regarding, oh, let me see if, if Mr. Scully is still here regarding turf field. There, there's some confusion about funds. You know, people think that there's money that's left over from this project. And I've tried to explain it in the past. So although a town meeting approved $4 million to be spent, when it went out to bid, uh, the bids came in and, and the winning bid was at $3.5 million. And so what the prior administration did was they bonded $3.5 million. That's the money that they had to work with. Um, and as we know, the, it, there were some cost overruns. Uh, there were some things that um, needed to be done that weren't accounted for. So I think the total bill for the project was about 300 and some odd thousand dollars over that $3.5 million. It, there's not a fund set aside for that where we could put the balance um, towards a, a turf field fund, we had to, um, I believe that was, um, that balance was paid for from the waste management funds uh, and the recreational purposes. So the bonded money was spent, the money that, to close out the project, the, the, uh, the overages uh, was spent from waste management. So there really is no balance. There's no pool of money that's sitting there. But if, um, if we need to discuss, and I think it's a good idea to discuss a replacement fund, that's certainly a worthy discussion with the Board of Ed to have. Um, with regard to some of the solar statements, it's one of the last things on the items tonight. Anybody that's here for that, I just want to address some of those concerns and to clarify that, A, this is not a town project. It's, it's private property. Um, you know, we don't, we're not in the business of developing property. Developers and, and the solar company put this project together and presented their proposal to the town strictly as a financial proposition in order to uh, allow it to go forward. Um, and we didn't just um, sign on the dotted line or make any kind of agreement. We tried to address every single one of the issues that the neighbors, the landowners have addressed. Um, we've negotiated for a certified forester to, um, to be consulted uh, with regard to the logging process. They've agreed, we've gotten to them to agree to erosion and control um, provisions. We've negotiated a road bond to address any kind of issues or damage to the road during the construction process of $125,000. Uh, we've negotiated an erosion control bond of $100,000 $100, to ensure that erosion and sedimentation control are incorporated into this project landscaping surety to make sure that if there is any kind of issue along the perimeter that landscaping uh, a landscaping bond in the amount of hundred thousand dollars will be provided um, we've negotiated local contractors um, a development and management plan a decommissioning plan uh, and performance bonds a stormwater management plan um, using shade tolerant grasses so that they don't plant something in there that just kind of dies and then adds to erosion and ultimately um, the kicker in this thing is it still does require approval by the siting council and the public participation process that that involves and I've said repeatedly that I intend to be an advocate during that process to ensure that all of these issues are addressed before the siting council um, but with that what we're really faced here as a as a council is a financial proposition um, a lot of people don't endorse this project, um, but it's not, um, 
It's not something that you know we're here to endorse or not endorse. Um, it really is something that you know is very limited to the financial request that the company has made upon the town. And even that, we've negotiated significantly in terms of the tax payments, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars more than was originally um, proposed. So with that being said, I do understand the concerns, and we've all heard the concerns of the community and, and some of the um, people uh, that live around this, but um, the burden is on this company to prove going forward that they can develop this project in such a way that it does not burden the surrounding community, and we're going to hold them to that. Uh, and that certainly is not a done deal. It's not over with. Um, it's just uh, another step in the process. So hopefully that achieves some kind of balance between a private properties, a private property owner's right to develop their property versus the community's <coughs> right to, um, to mitigate the impacts of that development. And we've tried to achieve that balance with this agreement. Moving on to item six, parks and recreation. Mayor, yes. I just wanted to ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, in re with regard to the email that we all received over the weekend, I'd like to have that topic added to our next meeting agenda. Which one was that? Uh, about the trees. Charter being revision. Cut down. Oh, trees being. I'm sorry. Which. The which tree email? warden's email to all of us regarding the number of trees that have to be taken down. I haven't even. Um, you, I'll, I'll take a look. I haven't seen it yet. Replied to him. I don't know if it was with regard to the trees on this project. Oh, the trees all around town, our tree warden's trees, the trees that are on a list that, of trees that haven't been taken down. How about you do this? Send me a letter, sorry, exactly no, what you want in the there. Solar trees. No, they're all going to come uh, down by somebody else. Why don't no. you send me an email just, exactly what you want on the agenda? I would just like the topic as he presented it to the council and to you to be on the agenda for the next meeting. Why don't you just put in writing exactly what you want so there's no, because I don't even, it's not in the forefront of my mind, I don't want to guess. Why don't you send me an email saying specifically you want X, Y, and Z on the agenda, you and I'll be sure to put it there. For a couple of times, back and forth, <laughs> we all yeah. got copied on it. Yeah, so yeah. I, I just want to make sure that it does because it was a bit of a surprise to me what I read. I'm not going to get into it now, but I mm -hmm. just want to be sure that you all know that I and I think some other council members would like to have that on our next agenda for February 27th. I put it this way: I'll be happy to explain all the background surrounding. Okay. That situation. Well, that's, that's fine. I'd be happy so, to do that. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, I don't. I can't send you the email right now, but I, I'm sorry. You know There's no more is. public comment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to item six: Parks and Recreation. Make a motion to authorize Mayor David R. Gronbach to apply for and sign all necessary documents in connection with the Dr. Pepper Slash Snapple Keep America Beautiful grant. This grant will be used will be for a requested 16 recycling bins to be placed at Lynn Deming Park, Youngs Field, the Creative Playground, and the Town Green. There are no costs involved for the town. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Szymanski. Can we just <clears throat> make sure that, uh, I assume they are, and I, I think they are, but just to confirm that they're consistent with anything that we already have so everything looks the same aesthetically. I'm sure they will be all. Yeah. We'll make a note with regard Thanks. to aesthetics. Yeah, but they don't, they don't say Dr. Pepper on them. No. Snap will well, be okay. Know. I've seen those. No, I've seen <laughs> them in some towns. I just was curious, yeah. to, you know. We'll make sure before we accept any money that the aesthetics are appropriate to our town setting. Thanks. Aesthetics. Very good. Thank you. I don't always think of those things. Um, so, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item B. Motion to approve um, Park and Rec Department to close the following roads on July 29, 2017 for the 50th Annual 8 Mile Road Race and the 15th Annual Fair Days 5K. Main Street northbound will be closed from 5.30 until 8.35 a.m. Main Street southbound will be closed from 8.40 until 10.30 a.m. Elm Street at the top of the green will be closed as needed to allow runners to cross. Bennett Street will be closed at the start of the race to allow all runners to clear. 15 minutes maximum. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7A, Public Works. Entertain a motion? Motion to approve the request for an appropriation in the amount of 75000 to be used for winter salt and sand purchases. Said funds should come from contingency or another account as deemed appropriate by the finance director and will be transferred to account number 104301056003, winter salt and sand. Fair enough. I think Mr. Zarver is still here. Uh, Mike, if you want to come up, 
as Mike had said last time, um, it's not so much the, let me see, how would I put it? The, the quantity, but, uh, or the quality, but the quantity of the storm. So we've had an above average number of, you know, one, two inches, not so much, you know, the 10 and 12 inches, but every one of them requires our crews to go out there to apply salt, sand, and uh, we're at that point where, um, especially with the last big one, that, um, you know, an extra $75,000 we think could get us over the hump for the rest of the season. Um, fair enough? If it's an average winter the rest of the season, yes. Okay. If it's abnormal, then we may or may not be having another second. discussion. All seconded. Okay. Um, so there is, so this will be coming from the contingency, and this is why we have contingency. Uh, you know, it's always a crapshoot. You never know if you're going to have more or less in terms of storm. We've got uh, approximately $493,000 left in our contingency account, so the 75000 from that um, is, um, is well within the range so that we've got, you know, enough of a cushion going forward as well. Um, so any further discussion, Mr. Szymanski? Since it's being taken from that account, can we just modify to take out or another account that's deemed appropriate by the finance director? Well, we usually leave that in for flexibility purposes. Yeah. I don't see any reason why to limit it. If they want it but in, then they want it out. The idea is to, that's the account. But is the acting is the who's the finance director right now? Mr. Palmer. He's in the office. He's been working from home, recovering from surgery. Okay. Uh, further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B. Entertain a motion. Motion to uh, approve the request um, by Public Works for the following transfers for new personnel positions. 17,000 from account 104301005101013 highway foreman to account 104301025100 recycling personnel and 1,000 from account 104301025130 overtime and 17,000 from account 104301005101014 personnel G1 through 4 to 104301005015 project manager. Okay, these are two positions that we have um, talked about in the past. The recycling um, manager is something that has been recommended for um, by the recycling, recycling subcommittee and has been identified as something that could really help the recycling center operate efficiently, um, achieve you know, apply for grants, um, you know, really keep on top of somebody who's dedicated uh, in that position to the recycling center. And it's worth it because it does generate money for us, the town, and it's important resource for our citizens. Um, so that was the feeling kind of behind that. And the project manager was something that we discussed in lieu of the assistant town engineer, right? Uh, we're, we're kind of, uh, we, we don't have a lot of mineral management uh, in public works that was identified as one of the issues in terms of uh, managing a large crew and a large workforce. Um, and you know, one of the things that we talked about was adding this project manager to fill in this role. Somebody who could be out, can um, review work that's being done throughout the town, uh, manage crews, and kind of fill in the gaps so that you know one person isn't uh, um, trying to do too much. Um, and we're able to do it. Yep. I'll second the motion. Oh, was there a second? I'm sorry. Did I just jump in again? Yes, you did. I apologize. Uh, Mike, fair enough. I don't know if um, yeah, anything yeah. else to add. Pretty much explains what we've gone through, the process. And then these positions yeah. will be in the budget that we'll be um, um, discussing uh, going forward as well. Um, so, any further questions? Mr. Szymanski. What are the uh, total annual costs per position? Salary-wise or? Yeah, salary insurance with and benefit. then pension um, obligations based on actuarials. I, know I don't have them. Um, the recycling manager, I believe, is in the 65-ish thousand range. Um, and the project manager is, I believe, in $80,000 budget estimate-wise. Um, on top of that, um, benefit-wise, I believe we use uh, 65%. Right? 
better question for finance. I think that that's the number that. Can we get an answer? Yeah. Day, uh, can we get an answer to whoever so. it is, since that's not Mike's bailiwick? Yeah, I don't have all the, those numbers necessarily. They don't fit within my budget, but I believe that's a number we use for like FEMA reimbursements and things like that. Mm -hmm. Let me see. The um, the project manager is something that basically is taking the place of the assistant town engineer. So that's already been budgeted in the past, and it just is being reclassified as a different job description. The only truly new um, position is the recycling um, manager, supervisor. Um, but I think you're right, Mike, it was somewhere in the $65,000 range, the salary. The recycling manager, is six, that, that represents 60, a $65,000 annual salary. Um, okay. The other one, I believe, is... Uh, Seventy-two thousand. Okay, fair enough. Uh, there's already. I'm uh, sorry. It, it's actually eighty thousand. We already have two thousand in the account, so my apologies. It's, th those are correct. Sixty-five okay. and eighty. Any further discussion? Just Mr. what was the the salary of the highway foreman that's being replaced? Generally, the same about sixty-five thousand. So, is there any the real net? Is there any He's, real net difference there? It's, it's not being replaced. It's uh, there's excess money in there because it's not currently filled. Mm -hmm. We still plan on refilling that position, but this the money that's not being spent right now um, on that position would be the the funds we're asking to transfer. Thank you, Mr. Szymanski. Just so I'm clear, the project manager position was funded as part of the last budget, but the money was transferred out of that account when the town planner was added as a position. That's right. Last year's budget. Sir. That's right. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, thank you. Thank you. Okay, item eight, entertain a motion to go into executive session. Make a motion to go into executive session. Second. And who are we including, um, the town attorney? We're including the town John. attorney. Anybody else, um, John? And Kathy um, Conway. And Kathy Conway, our tax assessor. Is there a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Walter Scott made a second. Open session, no actions taken. Right? That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Uh, back in open session, item 8A. Uh, make a motion to approve the settlement of Danziger Home Incorporated versus the town of New Milford as discussed in um, executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item B, I'll entertain a motion. Um, motion to authorize David R. Mayor David R. Grandback to sign all necessary documents in connection with the Small Cities Grant Program 2017. The grant is in the amount of 800000 and if secured, will be used and, ex and expended to complete renovations and improvements to Glen Eyre residences. Second. Okay, this is, um, so the Small Cities Grant Program, um, we haven't applied in a while. Um, I was approached by Glen Eyre Residences, which uh, many of you know is, uh, you know, caters to senior citizens in our community behind uh, CVS up on the hill over there. And the buildings are showing their wear and tear. They have a lot of upgrades that need to be made to the roof, to the, um, um, the units themselves. And uh, so we talked about applying for the Small Cities Grant Program. It's We've engaged Larry Wagner and Associates, who has handled all of our prior applications in the past and continues to manage um, some of the grants that we still have uh, with small cities uh, to pursue this. Uh, his fees are paid out of the grants. You know, what the town does is does some legwork and some administrative work. But ultimately, uh, if we get it, um, you know, the benefits will really inert to uh, Glen Eyre and their residents. So... Um, you know, I really I very much endorse this. Uh, any other questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a quick uh, five minute break before we get to uh, the ratification of the pilot agreements. It is approximately eight o'clock. We'll reconvene at 8.05. Thank you, everybody. Is item 9A. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to um, 
approve the pilot agreement between the town of New Milford and the New Milford Clean Energy LLC in the terms of which were voted on and approved at the January 9th, 2017 Town Council meeting. A second? Second. Okay, Mr. Szymanski. Uh, for the record, I'm not participating. Okay, Mr. Szymanski um, is not participating. Um, okay, so this is the agreement that we discussed uh, and that was voted on at the prior town council meeting. Is there any further discussion? I would just ask that the uh, vote be taken as a roll call vote. Fair enough. Well, when we vote, we'll do it by roll call. Uh, Mr. Baer. Again, from the get-go, I was never really happy about the project. Uh, but obviously, what came out of the town council meeting is a different story. I also agree with a uh, uh, roll call vote. Fair enough. And um, one of the things that was added into this that wasn't um, originally discussed, but I don't think anybody has any objection to, is it's currently zoned as the MPRDD zone. Um, what exactly is that called? The Major Planned Resi Residential Development District, basically, which would allow this to be developed for condominiums and, um, uh, and that kind of concentrated residences. And from what I understand, that development is still on the table. Uh, if this doesn't go forward. So in terms of balancing, um, you know, some kind of passive development versus what would clearly be a very disruptive um, development to the community on there, um, solar seems to be the lesser of two evils. And this would agree, this would, in this agreement, the company does agree to voluntarily terminate that major planned residential development district. Uh, and revert back to the R80 uh, zone. So, uh, Mr. Bass. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I know they had briefly talked about it at our last meeting, um, and we wanted assurances on the buffer that was going to be created around yep. um, the solar. Have they spoken to you more about that, about the buffer? I mean, we have things in place for guaranteeing the buffer? I think that's the uh, landscaping surety, you know, that includes the buffer to um, to ensure that that will be maintained, and that's a $100,000 bond. Um, so I think that that's, number one, I don't, I don't have any reason to doubt that they wouldn't want to maintain a buffer between this development and any kind of neighbors. Um, but if they didn't, then, you know, a $100,000 bond would be in place to make sure that we could landscape that accordingly. Um, any other questions? Hearing none, again, this is a ratification of the vote that was taken and uh, the council action that was approved at the past town council meeting. It's not an endorsement of the project itself, merely that this is the written form of what the council approved at the last meeting. And that's what we've tried to uh, effectuate with this written document. So that might distinguish it in some people's minds going forward. I'll call the roll call vote, starting with uh, Mr. Bass. Aye. 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 No. Mr. Szymanski abstains? No. Yes. Okay. The ayes have it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And um, Amoresco and uh, everybody else, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item 9B. I'll entertain a motion. Um, motion to approve the creation of a committee to review town properties and surplus land. Uh, committee of four uh, members of the town council and Kathy Castaneda will work together to review the properties and make recommendations for possible sale and future use. Second. Um, like I said in my comments regarding the budget, there is some urgency to generating revenue um, going forward. We're in some dire straits. If you believe what the state is kind of um, rattling their sabers about. So I've suggested this committee. I reached out to Mr. Szymanski, Mr. Esposito. I don't know if you're interested. I know you have a background in real estate uh, in the town. Um, I have been working with our town planner, Kathy Castaneda, to at least 
identify some of the properties that the town owns that are not being um, developed, we're not doing anything with right now, and as a potential opportunity. And Mr. Wargo, yes, sir. Yeah, on the front of it, you said you think you're just selling property to raise money. Mm -hmm. And that, that surely is part of it. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's town property, it's not generating any taxes. Right. So hopefully that we can sell some of this property and get some economic development going on it that would generate taxes far in advance. So you it's hit not it right just on the, the initial yeah. sale of the property. Right, right. We're trying to generate tax revenue going forward. Um, so that's, and, and we have a significant amount of property as well, Mr. Szymanski. Are we looking at all town properties or just certain town properties? Ms. Castaneda has a list of the most viable properties so that, you know, it's not a matter of, we're not looking at town hall, for instance. I mean, we're talking about <laughs> surplus properties, um, lands. Um, uh, one of the major properties is the one up on, um, behind Big Y that was purchased a number of years ago and, and never kind of came to anything. So the committee will review that, review some uh, market analysis and potential for the property, and work to make recommendations. Yes, Ms. Um, Francis. A couple years, maybe more ago, there was a committee that did exactly that. Uh -huh. And somewhere, there should, do you remember that, Pete, Tom? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. Tom Hill might have been. Yeah, yeah that, Tom, he's, that was recreation. the recreation. That was yes, but right. there was, right. yes, I remember that. But there was also a, a, the mayor had a survey committee or a couple people, I don't know who it was, but mm. to go around and look at all the properties. Because I remember seeing a list. There's some things that are just very tiny little pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. But um, so if it's around, it might save a little time. That'd be great. But uh, another question I have. So the ultimate goal, as Frank pointed out, isn't just to sell it, sell something um, just for the sake of, selling but to hopefully sell to someone who would then use that property because we sure. don't have enough empty ones as it is um and how would how once this group of people identify all of these how would we then go about marketing these what do you mean well if it becomes something that we want to sell as a town mm -hmm. how would would you engage with a, a commercial realtor sure you could either do it by a realtor it depends on the nature of the property i suppose and and what its um, best maybe uses would be. You could either do it by realtor, do it by RFP. Um, right. No. No. I'm yeah. just. I'm just. I guess what I really want to say is you, that was the right answer because yeah. I was hoping that we would do more than just. And this is no not, no aspersion on our current economic person, but more than we've done in the past. Sure. Because, and I mean way past before you and all that, yeah. that we really need to use some out of the box thinking and maybe engage with somebody who's. Uh, got a handle on how to do it yeah because the way it's been done not any one person's problem but it's all our problem because we don't have anybody coming here to look at not that we own the property sure. but whomever owns it we've had stores vacant granted those people want high rents etc mm. but there are others out on Route seven that are reasonable we just need to get the people and I think I you know, maybe I know you do yeah <laughs> I think if you identify some of these properties that maybe are attractive right I just hope that we do our best not to lose any potential buyers. I think the way I see it happening is if we agree on, you know, here's these properties and, you know, we want to move forward with them, work with our economic development director, Kevin Bielmeyer, to proactively um, find, you know, uh, target the market right. uh, <coughs> to generate interest in these properties because, you know, we could, and we could go into it to see what we want it to be. Um, what we're looking for. I mean, you know, the assisted living facility is something that's been talked about at East Street, but you know, there's there are none in this area. There, there could be a support for more than one of those. So there's a number of there's retail, there's but we'll office be open. space. We will be open as oh. a as a council, I hope, and as a town to. Everybody always says, "Oh no, not another Dunkin' Donuts." However. Mm -hmm. I have to say, as I've said before, Dunkin' Donuts um, has a whole lot of people looking at where it's a good idea to put one, and they wouldn't be putting them here if there weren't people who wanted them. Sure, sure. Same with Cumberland Farms or whatever. So I'm not saying I want another Dunkin' Donuts, but I think that we have to remember that there are ways to put in businesses, as in other towns look at Richfield, mm -hmm. they're not all boutiques, mm -hmm. but they do a very good job of facade, 
in signage mm -hmm. to make it appropriate for their overall look, and we can do that as well. So uh, I hope that we continue to work to that end with this. 100%. And I just want to get the town council involved early in the process so that, depend, I mean, it depends on the lot, the zoning, and all those other kind of factors. But if we come up with something with a framework, then we could say, you know, Kevin, go out there and, you know, try to find something within these parameters and, um, and hopefully we'll achieve some really good success. Mr. Wargo. <clears throat> I'm, I'm in favor of that. I just want to mention that it's going to be more than just this committee. Um, oh, yeah. The piece of property that you were talking about, Still Meadows. Yes. There was a proposal to put a hotel and a conference mm -hmm. center in. Absolutely. Which I thought that would be wonderful for the town. And we didn't have our act together because the Economic Development Commission, we just thought this was the greatest thing since sliced yeah, bread. It be. got voted down because right. I don't think we educated the public right. on really what it was going to do. So yeah. I would hope that we wouldn't Ever trick again. again on that yeah. because we surely need a, that was a, big a conference center in this. You need banquet a, hall. A banquet hall. Yeah. Banquet I, mean, hall. I yeah. bet you there's not a person in this town that doesn't say, we should have a banquet hall. We, we have had a banquet. chance to have one and they voted we it down. We can't put more than 50 people at a dinner any place oh. in town, any place, so yeah. we need something. Yes, that was a big mistake. Every, every prom, every yes. wedding, everything else is done somewhere else. <laughs> well, I think this committee is a good start. Obviously, EDC sure. is I'm going in. to be very much involved. <laughs> Mr. Esposito? I'll, I'll, be, I'll join. Excellent. Mr. Bass? Thank you, Mayor. Is this going to be a six six month subcommittee? Initially, I think all subcommittees start at six months. Six months. Yeah. And is it going is to that be right? Yeah, six months. I think there's a distinction uh -huh. in the charter. There's a difference between a town council committee. Oh, right. And a temporary committee like the turf committee. Oh yeah, this committees are set up for six months right. and have to be renewed. This is different. Oh, okay. This so this is, is a subcommittee of the town council. And, and I think you should be clear on so what kind of asked. committee this is. Oh, okay, no, no. This is a subcommittee of the town council, so it wouldn't be limited to any no. six-month yeah. period. Okay. Um, Mayor, is, is there certain properties that Ms. Castaneda is going to give the subcommittee to review? Yes, I'm sure she'll. Or are we looking at all properties? No, no, no. She's going to have a list. Yeah. Mr. And Mayor, I'd uh, be interested in serving on that committee. Excellent. Okay. And the... Um, and it's just for possible sale, or is it for possible looking at the feasibility of the properties that she's bringing forward? I don't know. What do you mean? What's well, for instance, if, well, the distinction would be maybe there's a future use for a property that we were looking at uh, that may be a lot, that may be an adjoining to another piece of property that the town owns that maybe in the future may have some significance, or may or may not. Sure. So I'm just wondering well, if we're looking at... Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says mean, possible sale or future use. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not. Well, you know, if you're gonna make a recommendation, it's yeah. not uh, <laughs> not binding. So you know, if it makes sense, um, recommend it. Uh, okay. At the end of the mm -hmm. day, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to kind of get outside the box and use whatever assets we have. And uh, I'll I'll ask to be on this committee as well. <laughs> That's becoming a quorum. You know? <laughs> There's only so many that, that can be that. Mr. Szymanski, what are your thoughts? I know you got a lot of background. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think it's a good use of people's time if we're not going to do an honest look where we look at, for instance, what is our current usage of sports fields? What is our usage of fields two years down the road, five years down the road, ten years down the road? And how do the town's properties function with that? Similarly, from a use of town facilities where we have public works, how does that tie into potential future usage of Century Brass, the reshuffling that you proposed uh, on your own? Uh, I don't understand what purpose this committee is going to serve unless we're going to do a real honest look and put in a lot of effort. Okay. But if it's just to look at a couple building lots that may have the potential to be sold, uh, there's not a lot of building lots trading. So I, I guess I just don't really understand what the purpose of this committee is when a lot of decisions have been made in the past year that could have been done with a committee such as this. So that's what I'm trying to better understand. Let the record reflect that I tried. And uh, okay, so Mr. Esposito, Mr. Bass, Mr. Chamberlain, and Ms. Lundgren have volunteered. Uh, oh, Mr. Wargo, I'm sorry, yes. Um, is that too many? Well, if you want. You it's only it's a subcommittee, but. You can, you can be on it. Anybody yes, can participate. Yes, a month ago. Oh, okay. I did, you're yeah, right. I forgot. Right. I'm sorry. That's yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so, the list of the fields that I, I know that was done, we call sports fields. Yeah. Um, they're called sports fields. There is no sport going on there now. So, is it 
conceivable that you would look at those types of properties, not as sports fields, but perhaps as potentially good to sell for, you know, retirement facilities or whatever else somebody might want. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure where we got locked into saying that is a sport field for the future and that's a sport field for the future because it's flat and open. Yeah. Perhaps there is somebody who might like that piece of property for something else. If it makes sense for the committee and they want to make a recommendation, I mean, that's I'm open well, to listening to anything. Well, I guess that's, that's the yeah. sort of thing that I see. That not not blaming any particular person. It's yeah. just we get in that habit of thinking of something in terms of what we would like to see it as in the future. Sure. And. Um, when something that's out of the box, such as putting an active adult community up on the top of Candlewood Mountain comes along, there's a lot of people who, uh, I was at first, uh, thought that was pretty crazy. But I changed my thinking when they sized it down, and of course it never happened. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of reasons, because they were putting another road in. Sure. Uh, so you know, you weren't here then. But um, I think we have a need for sporting fields for mm -hmm. all our kids, of course. But I also think that if we have a nice flat open piece of land and somebody says that would make a great X, that I would like to think that this committee or our EDC guy would be open to that. Sure. Because it doesn't do us any good if we just keep thinking about it as a sport field. Well, let's focus on, yeah, you know, I mean, listen, if, if, if it makes sense, make a recommendation, consider it. Let's focus on the low hanging fruit. I'm looking for a recommendation within two months, frankly. I mean, you know, we really want to have an idea of what we want to do with this because it is a process. So within that time frame, if some recommendations can be made, um, then so be it. We'll bring it to the council and we'll discuss it. Um, well, I guess when you say low-hanging fruit, that's your, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, which one's particular, but sure. as, as a council member, if we're going to do this, I'd like to know about all of them, not just the ones that you or you or you or you or you think are appropriate. That's not to me. I'll, I'll, no, that's no, why I, I say the planner. I mean, bring it all. I want to yeah. see it all because if we discuss everything here the way we should, I think it's important that we get out of our little New England minds occasionally mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, we can put a sport field up somewhere else and we have more kids in this town and we can, I'm not going to need to harp on sporting fields, but sure, sure. it's a flat piece of property. Like Frank said, we merely missed the boat on a, yeah. uh, a nice hotel mm -hmm. and conference sure, center because nobody could get out of their own way and say yes. The so beauty of the situation is that we have a professional town planner whose job is to mull around these exact type of issues. So Good. I have no problem with, with us um, trying to frame those questions and trying to get answers from a professional, uh, pros and cons, and then obviously it's up for us to deliberate. Mr. Wargo. Yeah, we have 12 acres adjacent to Kimberly Clark, yeah. the town owns. Okay. We're using these fields because they weren't being used at all. No, I understand that. But Kimberly Clark has got a piece of property way up north. Yes, I know that well. love to. So maybe we can work something with that property. We could sell them 12 acres and get 20 acres or whatever. Exactly. So that's the kind of thing that, that I envision this committee looking at. I Absolutely. think that's all, right. all relevant. Yeah, it's right. not, yes, I'm sorry. Can I get clarification as to who, who is actually on the committee? I have five members. <laughs> no, no, four members. So Mr. Wargo, Mr. Esposito, Mr. Bass, and Mr. Chamberlain. Okay, thank you. Anybody else who wants to participate, obviously, you know, has they can the be right just, to do so. They just can't be a voting member. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. It's all yours. <laughs> I, I want participation because when, some, when we do propose something like this, it's got to be bipartisan and uh, um, it's not easy, as Mr. White had kind of um, intimated, to get anything new done. but. We're at that point now where we don't have the luxury of kind of sitting on assets that aren't producing anymore. We need to move forward with um, some bold ideas and visions. 50 years later. <laughs> right, you know, so, some of this property that we purchased and didn't do anything with. So I will keep it on a short schedule though, uh, but you will have a professional town planner working with you and making recommendations. So thank you to those uh, that did volunteer. We and uh, we'll be in touch. Oh, we didn't vote. We didn't vote, we didn't vote. Oh, do we? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Bass. What's... Are we having or do we need to expend funds for a secretary for the subcommittee? I wouldn't say so. Kathy will take that. I, I don't think there's an obligation for any of those meetings to be on the record. Okay, thank you. Because it's not a permanent or temporary one. Thank you. Fair enough. Great. So we can say what we think? Sure. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We got one more. Mr. Szymanski. Any abstentions? 
Yeah. Motion I carries. And item 10. All right, motion to approve the appointment of Lisa Lawson and Christopher Bruzzi um, to the Hidden Treasures Park Committee for the term 213-2017 uh, to 723-2017. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you.